I'd like to put the, Mr. Kowalczyk, for what purpose does the member rise? And I have an access issue, and actually having the microphone walk to me would have been better. Um, and thank you for embarrassing me. Um, so um, I believe that uh, Mr. Illingsworth made a comment when he was originally proposing this, which I think bears clarification. I'd like the chair to rule on it. He, I believe I heard him say, perhaps it was someone else, I'm sorry, this has all gotten very confusing, that the author or the uh, a responsible person would be contacted and they would be allowed to pick the ones with the most uh, nominating votes. I see nothing in it, let me finish please. I see nothing in this that says that the author or the responsible party will be told which gets the most votes. I'd like clarification of that please. Um, it would have been Don who spoke. Yeah, I, I believe that you're do you want to answer the question, Ms. Well, sure. I mean, no, there's nothing in the, I don't, I don't believe I said, and I don't recall anybody else saying that the num information as to the number of nominations any particular work got would be revealed until it's publicly released, you know, after the voting and everything. So certainly when people who have worked on the finalist list are contacted, they're just told you have works on the finalist list. They're not told what the relative order of them is, of the number of nominations. So. Yes, Mr. Adams. And this, this would not change that. Andrew Adams, this, this point actually came up in the committee discussions yesterday, so I feel it's, it's useful to, to, to mention this. Um, it, it is true that the uh, finalist would not be given the information, but the finalist is at liberty to say to the administrator, please just pick the two with the most nominations. Uh, and and that, 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 that fits with that. The, the, the finalist can say that. Um, and it is there, they don't have that information, but the administrator does, and they can then communicate that intent to the administrator. If I could point out that the finalist saying pick the two with the highest nominations is exactly equivalent to the finalist saying I do not wish to withdraw any of my works. I, I'd like to put the question, Mr. Is there any objection to voting on the underlying motion? No one. Mr. Yallo, for what purpose does the member rise? Sorry, I'm. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Ben Yallo. Since I do not believe we have had debate on the underlying, uh, I don't believe we can call for debate to be closed until we have at least some speeches yeah, in favor and against. Speak. The custom of the business meeting has been. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chairman, I move to erase all existing debate times clocks left on this motion and create a time limit of not more than one minute in favor and one minute against to be limited to one person per side. Second. Second. Is there any objection to that motion? There is an objection. Therefore, we will vote on the motion. All those in favor of removing all current debate time and adding one minute per side. All right, all those opposed, please raise your hands. The motion is carried. We have one minute of debate for and one minute of debate against. Mi Mr. Eastlake, as the maker of the original motion, you have Yes. Hi. This is a great constitutional amendment. It does wonderful things. Uh, it gives the voters greater choice of different uh, varieties of uh, uh, radic presentation series and uh, different sets of authors to vote on. And it's now been improved, and uh, you know, new and improved version has been voted in, and boy golly, everybody should vote in favor of it. Speech against? You have one minute. Name? Hyman Rosen. Uh, Hyman Rosen. 
Um, we are debating uh, at the business meetings uh, several other means by which to uh, control what gets nominated and what gets put on the list. Given that we're debating all of those other ways, you know, EPH, 3SV, and, and the other things, I don't think it's appropriate to micromanage the individual nomination lists by, you know, removing, you know, oh, you know four and two and, and things like this. I think we should just go with whatever the nomination process produces, and if that happens to be, you know, four episodes of some series in one year, then that's what the nominees have, uh, nominators have chosen. And that's what, that's what the uh, list should contain. All right. Now that we've had, standing on the right. yeah, Miss Neal, for what purpose does the member rise? There's still time left for no. No. no, it was the motion was one speaker for and one speaker against, with no more than one minute for each of them. Mr. Cronengold, for what purpose does the member rise? I move to amend this motion um, the, uh, to add a sunrise, one year sunrise and one year sunset clause as we described earlier this meeting. Objection. Objection. Second. What, what is your objection? Making an amendment is debate. We are out of time now. No. Oh. By standing rule, yeah. it is not. Yeah. Mr. Bloom is correct. By standing rule, this amendment is in order. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Is there any? Uh, Undebatable. It's, it's not debatable. Thanks. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to vote on the amendment to add a sunrise and a sunset clause, thus making it, by definition, uh, delayed ratification. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? Hands down. The no's appear to have it. They do have it. The amendment fails. I'd now like to vote on the underlying motion. <laughs> I'd really like to do that now. <laughs> Is there any objection? No. All right. <laughs> All those in favor of ratifying nominee diversity as amended, raise your hands. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. The motion is ratified. And I'm going to move that we stand in recess for five minutes uh, so that we can have a technical timeout and people can use the restroom.